All right, we have Ode Osborne here following his first Octagon win at UFC Vegas 18 a little more than a week ago. He stops Jerome Rivera in just 26 seconds. Happy to have the Jamaican sensation on the program. Ode, it has been a little while. We we're just talking about it off air. How are you, man? I'm doing well, man. It definitely has been a little while, but it's, it's good to be back. <laughs> Absolutely. How, how does it feel, man? First promotional win under your belt. You did it in an impressive fashion. This, this couldn't have gone any better, right? No, it definitely could not. And it feels great, but um, I'm just trying to stay grounded right now and try to, you know, focus on the mission because if you let it get you off task and you let it kind of take you, then you'll lose sight and then you'll get all wrapped up in everything. So I'm trying to just enjoy it, but not overly get, you know, distracted by the hype or anything like that, if that makes sense. Yeah, so you don't like you don't sit there and smell the roses. You just give it a little sniff, and then you're yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep, yep. Just give it a little whiff. All right, it's good. <laughs> what's Throw next, it away. What's, what's, yeah, what's the next rose smelling like? Let's get this next rose. Yeah, I'm trying to get all the roses. All right, one rose, two rose. Oh, championship rose. Okay, let's go. Yeah, you want that golden rose? I mean, this yeah. is this is a nice rose, but you want that beautiful. You want that bouquet of golden roses. That's what I'm saying, man. That's rose. That, that that's what I'm be stopping like. <laughs> <laughs> you smell that thing. <laughs> it was um it was it was kind of interesting how the fight all came full circle because originally you were supposed to fight Jerome, I think on that January thirtieth card that, that yes. didn't happen. Yes. And then he and then he fights Francisco Figueiredo like ten days before that, and then you were supposed to fight Dennis Bonder on this card, and then yes. you end up fighting Rivera anyways. Like how did you react to this chaos and this sort of kismet moment that after everything, you're gonna fight Jerome anyways? Um, like I said, I think leading up to the fight, I just remembered, um, why it is I was doing what I was doing and, you know, my first UFC fight, I kind of lost my why as I <clears throat> have been told. And, uh, I forgot, I, I got lost in a moment and I was just like, oh man, I'm here. I made it. Okay. Yeah. You know, but no, um, so leading up to this fight, I just kind of stayed in the zone. I kind of just stayed in that, 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 that zone state from December when they told me I was fighting Jerome Rivera to when they told me the fight was off. You know, I was like, okay, stay in that zone. Stay in that zone, man. God has a plan. Stay in that zone. And then they got, they got me another opponent. Stayed in that zone. I trained, trained. I, tra not, I didn't change anything up. I didn't change up a thing. I, I just kept training, like, like everything was just on par, you know what I'm saying? Just kept it going, kept it going. And then uh, they got me Denise Bondar on the way to Vegas Tuesday. On the way to Vegas, they called me and they said he, you know, he has some issues leaving the country. I don't know what it, you know, I don't know what what it relates to or whatever. But I was like, man, okay, you know what? State my my managers were like, you know what? We're gonna try to see if we can get a, a replacement. So I just stayed the zone once again, stayed calm, stayed grounded trying to let my emotions and my thoughts go, you know what I'm saying? Because once you go down that rabbit hole, man, of emotional thoughts, you're just like, oh, man, now I, now I got to find somebody else. Now I got to watch film. Now I got to do it. But if you train for it, if you train to fight everybody, you don't got to worry about that. And that's, all, that's one thing I do. I, I, I train to be able to fight any style. And um, so they call me back about Jerome Rivera. And they said, you know, he'd take the fight. And I was like, they, but they said he couldn't be a flyweight because he just fought two weeks ago. And I'm sure he kind of uh, ate a lot and ballooned up a little bit. So it had to be a 45. So I was like, let's do it. I, so I had, to, I had to actually gain, you know, I had to gain, gain weight for this fight. And that's why it said I was 143 instead of 145. Well, there you go. I mean, it's got to be nice that you have to gain weight instead of cut weight, right? Yeah, you have to be smart about it because, you know, I don't want to be, as Connor said, uh, stuck in the mud. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to be, I want to be nice and loose and be able to be fast and explosive. You know what I'm saying? So I had, I had to be smart about it, and it was a process. But just staying calm that whole time was the key. Yeah, and and a lot of people like make they talk about like opponent switches and like, how is it going to affect this person? And I remember thinking to myself, like, this is not going to affect O'Day at all because one of the, the, the main things I remember from our past conversations is the thing you loved about the gym you train at right now. And the coaches you work with is that they allow you to be you like, you're not training for anybody specific. You're just you going out there and having fun and, and styling. Like that's who exactly. you are. It doesn't exactly. matter who you're, it really doesn't matter who you fight. Right. And 
and that's why I believe that I get so many finishes. I'm not trying to, you know, hype myself up to any any, um, degree at all, but that's why I believe I get so many finishes because I'm I'm not training to strategy. I'm not training one one style. You know what I'm saying? I can adapt to everything, and being able to adapt to everything that means you can hunt for food however you want to hunt for food. Whether I want to bring a rifle, a fishing pole, a bow and arrow, an axe, it don't matter. I got all the tools in my belt, and I can hunt wherever I, however I want. So it doesn't. It shouldn't matter. It never matters whenever anything happens because this is my fighting style, man. I, I'm a I'm a finisher. Like I'm always looking for the kill, always. And people always are like, well. You know, can you fight 15 minutes? I'm like, I can fight 15 minutes, no problem. Like, cause I, that's me. I, I'm, I will, I will fight you for 15 minutes. Like, looking while looking to finish you, I'm looking for finishes for 15 minutes until I get it. If I don't get it, it's gonna be a miserable 15 minutes in there with me. Kind of going back to your Octagon debut, you said you sort of lost focus along the way. The the, the why, like you 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 kind of lost track of the why and. I remember talking to you before that fight. I remember how confident you were. I didn't see like anything totally out of order, out of the ordinary, but I honestly like after the fight, I, I do remember you saying like when talking about being on the same card as Connor, like five years from now, people are going to remember Connor fighting on an O'Day Osborne card. And yeah. when, I couldn't believe the reactions to that fight with Brian Keller Hepter's over because you know, when the fight ended, people just annihilated you on social media, like oh, creating yeah. memes and all this stuff. And I know in the grand scheme of things, like who cares what they have to say, but yeah. like, were you seeing people sort of celebrate your demise, so to speak? Oh yeah, for sure. And I still, I still say, you know, um, people are, people are still going to see, people are still going to say that Connor fought on my card. You know, it's, 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 it's not, it's not something that, um, that I'm trying to brag about. You know what I'm saying? It's not a, a ego thing. It's a, I was on a small island and visualized being great at a young age and not going back to, you know, certain struggles. That's what that is. That's not a ego thing. So it, it didn't, you know, it didn't really bother me to be honest with you because I, 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 I've been, I've been dealing with people like that my whole life. My whole life is people doubting me, you know, my whole life. So on the grand scheme of things, I thrive no matter what. No matter what people say or no matter what it is, I'm going to thrive because I know how I am as a person, you know. And like I said, grounding yourself. But when I, when I talk about um, losing my why, I just meant from, like, walking out. You know, when I was walking out to the fight, like, usually I'm, like, just stoic. But I was so amazed, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking, you, you know, you got Tom Brady and all these famous <laughs> athletes in the crowd, are you seeing? And you know what I'm saying? I'm in my head. I'm like, man, like I can't believe this is happening. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, I can't, be- I can't believe I'm here all this time, all these struggles, all these tribulations and trials, and and I'm here. And I, you know what I'm saying? But while I'm thinking all that, I'm not, I'm not zoned out to where I need to be. And usually I get, usually I get into a certain space, a little, a certain Zen space, where I'm, I'm just uh, a destroyer <laughs> in that space. And, um, you know, I wasn't, I didn't get there because I, I let that, like all the distractions of taking in the, the moment, like, you know what I'm saying? Cause it was a beautiful moment for me. I've never had anything like that in my life. So walking out, I was just like, damn, I can't believe this is happening. Like, this is amazing. This is real, you know, but that's what I was saying. I let, I let the, the elevation of the hype, you know, let me get just distracted just, just that little bit just for a little bit it's all it takes because i know at the end of the day you know i can bust out of any submission and the thought i feel you know i did get caught in kelleher's submission but i should have never you know i i i wasn't focused to where i would just ah, you know what i'm saying like like to where i'm like a monster like i you know what i mean nobody can hold me down nobody can submit me when i'm truly focused and that's where i wasn't and um at the end of the day, he wanted it more, man. Shot, hats off to him. Do you think in a weird way that if that fight didn't get bumped up to the main card, that the walk wouldn't have been, like, as crazy for you? Like, because Brady and those people probably wouldn't even have been in the crowd yet. You know what I mean? Like, those yeah. guys probably wouldn't have arrived. Like, do you think, like, it would have been different had it been earlier and you guys didn't get that last-minute bump up to the main card? 
Who knows, man? Um, everything happens for a reason because I think that it was supposed to happen that way, so I can go back and revisit my station. You know what I mean? Um, it was. Some, I, I don't. I don't. Reg- I don't uh, regret that fight at all. Everything turned. It turned out just the way God intended for me to learn the lessons I needed to learn. That's all. Fair enough. Um, it's tough to go down those rabbit holes anyways. You don't want to get, it's dangerous yeah. territory to start thinking yeah. about that stuff. You only had the the one fight in 2020 and of course like a, a freaking pandemic strikes and it throws everything for a loop and not just for you as a fighter, but I mean, you're a teacher as well. So everyone's forced to change and adapt with the times. And I'm sure you're still dealing with these changes today. What What would you say 2020 taught you more than anything with everything you had going on last year? It taught me how to survive in difficult situations, and I'm, I'm, let me let me refer, let me rephrase that. It didn't teach me how to survive. It taught me. It, it it showed me that I was always surviving, and so it was just natural. When when COVID hit, it, it, I, I didn't panic. I didn't freak out. I didn't stress. I had nothing. It was just it was it was just you know what I'm saying for me, like growing up, um, you know my, my mom worked her ass off to get me to where I am today and we always had hard situations and stuff like that when stuff happens so I just stayed the course and stayed focused and it it just proved to me that everything that I've done in my life has played a part to where I am right now because when COVID hit and I saw I felt the calm it was almost like I went camping right and nobody else in the world have been camping before and everyone's trying to figure out how to light this fire you know what i'm saying everyone's trying to figure out how to hunt for fish and food and i'm just like i mean i mean i've been camping my whole life <laughs> you know what i'm saying like <laughs> i've been hunting my whole life what you mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah like your badges on you're ready to go Yo, i had everything i had my little my little flink you know what i'm saying i've been watching <laughs> naked and afraid since forever <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny man i remember um you know, seeing you now, I remember the first time I chatted with you is right after the contender series win. And it was like one of those conversations that really stuck out to me because we didn't, I mean, we talked about the win and the fight and the contract and stuff, but it wasn't like about who I want to fight. And I want to be a world champion. I want to be rich. Like it, it was about what the opportunity meant to you. And it had nothing to do with popularity and being a star is about what you can do with this quote unquote power to give back to your community, to inspire others and, you know, inspire change that you want to see in the world. So, so I'm curious, and you can only do so much as one individual. How are we doing? Like, how is the world doing in your eyes? And I know it's tough because of the pandemic and everything, but how are things shaping up in your eyes compared to where we were in July of 2019? Um, one of my coaches said something to me, um, to be honest with you, I think right now we're, 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 we're doing well in my eyes because no matter what people say or how the system works or who we put in the office or who we don't put in the office, it's proven that the system works. You know what I'm saying? If someone, if say, just talk about, uh, if somebody's in office and people aren't happy with their results and how their performance has been, they're no longer in office. Um, Now, in terms of how the world is doing now, um, I think, you know, even with like racism and stuff like that, we're we're growing in in a, a way that I've never seen before. I watched the Super Bowl the other day and I've never seen so many commercials that had um, Black History Month and um, just, you know, so many uh, just empowerful commercials that I've never seen throughout the years I've watched the Super Bowl. So I feel that we're headed in the right direction. And uh, if you listen to the, to, the, to the mainstream media, we're never going to be well. We're never going to be where we want to be. We're never going to be here. We're never going to be there. We're never, we're never going to be enough. But you have to analyze it on a certain wave. I think. I guess one of my coaches uh, said something to me in in Vegas, and he was like, "2020 happened. Like it it it, it was it happened. Okay, how did, I'm trying to I'm trying to think about how he said it. He said, I'm trying to. Okay, I'm gonna paraphrase. 
He said, the things that happened in 2020 and the past four years were the best things that could have happened to America because it, it, it kind of changed and evolved our country to open our eyes to different things. You know what I'm saying? And this whole um, virtual world, right? The virtual world has opened up in so many different ways, so many different things. You know what I'm saying? There's so many different improvements now on the virtual aspect of what we can do when we when we can't leave our house, what we can do when we can't, you know, go for food. What we, you know what I'm saying? There's so many different things that, that just started improving just because... You know, I'm, I'm not saying, I guess a lot of people lost their lives because of COVID, but a lot of improvements started uh, started happening just because of this negative thing. So it's, it's all about your perception, how you perceive it. And I, I think now a lot of good things are coming and I'm just crossing my finger, man. I'm crossing my finger that it, it, it stays. And I really want, I really want unisons, man. I really want us to be united. And uh, just seeing all these, like I said, these these changes and these commercials now, and everything is 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 starting to hopefully come together. I don't want to speak too soon, but hopefully come together where, you know, the pressure of the country was up here. And like I said, man, if 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 our current president could just keep, he don't gotta do anything. He don't gotta, I don't care. All all he's gotta do is just keep the pressure down. And just last out your term because you know we're like it's like a pressure cooker. The pressure was just like it was just up here. It was it was just boiling over. And uh, like I said, I'm you know I I really I'm not going into politics to be a, to be honest. Like like when I say politics, I mean like Republican Democrat. I would never consider myself a Republican or a Democrat. I'm neither. But uh, I would I would like. For like I said, that the pressure just to be just be down, so we can grow and build as a unit, as one. Like, and that's the message I always want to want to preach and give out, is for us to be as one. And um, I think, I know, I'm, I know, I'm giving a long speech right now. I'm talking. I'm just blabbering. <laughs> I'll be doing that. But I think the the power that the U. S. give me is the ability to to lead in that way. You know what I'm saying? Because you got leaders over here, and you got leaders over here, but you don't got any leaders in the middle. That's trying to, that's trying to, you know what I mean? Elevate everybody in the same direction. And that's what we need. We need some leaders that, that's in the middle to bring over here and over here together more. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm, I'm hoping to have a a, a, a large role or impact. I don't know how yet. I'm just gonna pray on it and ask God to give me the voice and the direction. Do you feel like the MMA space is kind of in that place for you to become that middleman right now? Because I know with all these changes in the world and the pressures and all that stuff that you mentioned, it's it can be tough to kind of like jump right in there and plant your feet in that middle ground. But do you feel like the state of MMA and state of the UFC kind of gives you that opportunity right now? Do you see like a path towards it? Oh, most definitely. Um, because the UFC is probably one of the largest sports in the world, right? Everyone thinks football is, but football is an American sport. UFC is, is worldwide, you know, um, and it's proven that in times of crisis, like when COVID happened, they went to Abu Dhabi and did, you know what I'm saying? So uh, the the platform there that it's that's given the fighters is incredible, and I'm hoping that it'll give me a, a a very large platform to be able to do God's work and do whatever it is I'm supposed to do because I can't. I don't know, you know what I mean? I'm, I can just say things that I want to do, but I, I don't know what it is I'm, I'm going to do or what it is I'm gonna be able to do. I just know the possibilities are endless and I wanna be on uh, the possibility train. There you go. I, I think we all want to be on the possibility train. <laughs> right. You, whoever wants to conduct that train, sell me a ticket, I'm on it. Uh, I want to ask you about this. I haven't had a chance to ask a fighter about this yet, but since you're here and we're having this great conversation, I'm going to do it. One thing that's become like a hot topic over the last several days when it relates to MMA and the media and the people surrounding it, I don't know if you saw this, but Cub Swanson came out and stated that members of the MMA media should have three amateur MMA fights because it'll give us a much more... I guess, renowned perspective on the sport. So I'm curious, like, what are your thoughts on that? Because 
you're managed by a company that does a tremendous job getting you guys and gals out there to tell your stories, to talk about what's going on. And you've done quite a bit of interviews over the last couple of years with lots of different people in this space, O'Day. What do you think of that? I would say um, if he said judges and referees should have three fights, then I would, I would agree with that. But he's talking about people who are media platform uh, interviewers. No, nah, I think that's ridiculous. I don't think I don't think they should have three. I don't, I don't think you need to, to to fight to interview somebody. You know what I mean? All you gotta do is if you if you watch the sport religiously, and you you do your homework right, and you study and you do you watch film and you do what you need to do everything you need to do. You don't need to have fights to interview somebody. I think judging is different though. But I think I don't think you need to have any fights to interview somebody. I think that's nah. I don't I don't think that because not everyone is a fighter. You know what I'm saying? Some people just like to um, be an anchor. Some people just like to uh, be a reporter. Some people like to, to to interview people. You know, a lot of people don't don't like to fight, and that's just it. You can't you can't say that. You know, even though you don't want to fight and you don't like fighting, you gotta fight in order to be an interviewer like or an anchor like i think that's kind of silly i think I, I think you just kind of like even even if you just like train i think you kind of like oh, that's what, different. Yeah. If, even that too but the yeah, three amateur training. fights i was like eh, i don't know yeah yeah no nah, it's because that's when the people it's this is a serious game right this is this is a serious sport you know what i'm saying training like yeah training i can get behind but fighting i wouldn't just put you know anybody in there and, and say you should do this or that and, and try to get your heads busted up just, just to be a, a reporter. Like, nah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't want to go in there and spend 26 seconds with you all day. That's, that's, that's crazy. My wife would never right. let me do it anyway. Right. So there you go. So yeah. So, so 26 seconds, man, you get in there, this thing is over. And what's interesting about Jerome Rivera is that he has a style where, I mean, he's a big dude, so he can use his distance very well. And if he gets comfortable in his distance, he can make things very, very frustrating for the guy who's fighting. Like Alexander Volkov does a tremendous job with that. Once he figures that all out and uses that space to his advantage, it is tough to take that away from him. And you didn't give Jerome a, a chance to get going whatsoever. So getting in and out of there in less than 30 seconds, it's great. It's a short night. But after a year away, was there a part of you that's like, that's it? 13, 13 months away in 26 seconds? Nah, because the way I was thinking was I wanted it to be finished early just so I can get another fight. I don't want to wait another year to fight. I want to fight within, like, two months, you know? So I was happy because that meant that I can fight I can fight right away again. Well, that makes sense. But you had, and it was, you had a name to go, ready to go, too, Francisco Figueiredo, which I actually thought was, was a very smart call-out because why don't you just beat Jerome, got a decision, and you put him away in 26 seconds? I liked it. Plus, he's obviously the brother of the the current champion at, at 125 pounds. So, what, what did did you watch the fight between Francisco and Jerome? What did you think of it? I thought it was a I thought it was a good fight. I thought he looks, you know, what I mean, the first couple rounds, like I thought he was he seems like a fun fighter, like somebody that I would love to fight. Like I just, you know, what I mean, because he 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 just seems like his style is very like he's he's fun. You know what I mean? Um, and I probably will have the largest reach in the bantamweight, sorry, in the flyweight division. Probably, I don't know who has a greater reach advantage than me in that flyweight. But I, I, I saw, you know, in that third round, he was kind of letting Jer Jerome get his reach off on him, and I was like, oh, okay. But then, um, you know, it did, they, they, they both, they were, they were kind of going at it. Like I said, that third round. Like I was like, I saw Jerome come, you know, I thought he was going to come back for a second, but no, I thought, I thought it was a, I thought it was a good fight. I watched it and I was just kind of like, I analyzed it and I was like, mm, you know, like, eh, I was like, eh, it, it looked like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, eh. it was a fight. Yeah. That, it, I didn't see anything spectacular. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> um, so perfect world. When do you want to get back in there? Is this like a, get me like in I there said, ASAP kind less, of thing? Less than two months. In the perfect Lessons. world. There you go. So I know a lot of people have asked you about the bonus and with the way yeah. you're approaching your career. I mean, you listen, you got these goals, you have these aspirations. We just talked about it, but 
you're also trying to like enjoy this journey along the way. Like you're not in any significant rush, but you're the kind of guy that like when the time comes, the time comes. So how did you react when you didn't get the 50 G's? Like, was that the mentality you sort of took with getting that news where it seemed like, Hey, it's probably coming, but if it doesn't happen now, not the end of the world, it's going to happen like the next fight or the fight after that. That's what it was. It was like, if it doesn't happen now, and if it, you know, but but I was watching the fights, like, oh, man, I'm going to get it. And right when that flying knee happened, I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know. But here's the thing, man. I I can't be ungrateful. You know what I'm saying? And I am grateful for what God has presented to me right now. And there was a moment where I was kind of like, man, I really wanted that 50G. I really wanted that bonus. But then I just stopped. And like, you know, people were asking me interviews. People, so many, so many people interviewed me about that 50, 50 G. And I had to like take a step back. Like, you know what? Nah, man, you, you, you're good, man. You're, you're, this is that hunger. Like, this is that hunger that all it is really is that I'm, I'm, I'm like a nobody right now in the UFC. And so I got to make a name for myself. That's all. You know what I mean? I got to, I got to make them know who I am. So that's, that gives me motivation to kind of, you know, like, Hey, here, here, here's somebody that you all never heard about. <laughs> I, I want to wrap with this because I thought this was very cool. And it, I think it was in October. You you posted this video to your Instagram and it's you in the middleweight champion of the world, Israel Adesanya. And he wanted to do a video for like students in your class, like the, the ones that, that watch anime and are big fans of it. And it was yeah. just something like he wanted to do for them. I mean, this is the UFC middleweight champion. This is one of the biggest stars in the sport, you yeah. know, and you're a young guy, you've had one fight in your UFC career. And then he comes through with some cool content for the kids like that. That's awesome, man. What did that mean to you and to them? It was, when I tell you like Izzy and I, when I tell you we clicked right, right away at the PI, like we saw, like we clicked. It was just like, we had the same exact energy. Our energy was so in unison. It was crazy. It was crazy. Um, I'd, I'd watched the video with him, and he said, you know, when he sees a kid and the kid doesn't want to, like, freak out because he sees him, then he'll look at him and he'll kind of give the kid a wink, and then their eyes light up and they smile. And he was telling me, he was saying in the interview that that's, like, his, that's like the greatest moment for him is when he can make somebody's day like that. So when I saw him, I was like, <laughs> I gave him a little <laughs> wink. <laughs> and so he knew right away what I was talking about. And so we kind of just hit it off. And it was just it was just amazing that he just was like, yeah, let's do it. You know, we started talking about the kids that I work with. And I was telling him, because I'm a big fan of anime myself. That's, you know, I, I, I watch anime religiously. So we were talking about that right off the bat. And then we started talking about the kids that I work with. And he's like, oh, we should do a video. Let's do it. And it was just... It was so awesome that, you know, he he just he he took the time and was scheduled for a like a, a physical therapy appointment and he took the time and I think he I don't I don't know if he went and did that appointment. I think he he, he might have, but he stopped what he was doing and came upstairs and did that video with me, and I thought that was so dope. Like it, it was unbelievable. I, I, you know, what I'm saying, like, because sometimes, you know, man, when you, one of the people that are the champion or, or any of that, they, they, they have a, you know, like a chip on their shoulder, and they have like not, not I wouldn't say a chip, but they have kind of, like their ego. They don't want to, they, they walk around like that, you know, like they're the greatest. And, ah, and he was not like that at all, and it's good to see that because that's what I want to be like someday when I get to that that pinnacle you know i want to be able to to that's my, my biggest fear and i've heard this before from khabib and i see it i see it but my biggest fear is is this whole game changing me as a person and getting me shifted me away from god and what i really believe in and what i stand for you know what i'm saying that's i heard that from khabib once and i was like dude that's crazy that i think about that all the time like i really think about that like you know like, am i gonna change like, I, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I, I try to be, that's why I try to ground myself so much because I don't want to change. I want to be the same person. I want to be this, the Ode Osborne that you're interviewing now and the same Ode Osborne that you'll interview, you know, five years from now. That's, that's amazing. It's got to give you some, just some like great hope for that too. Like that future, like being around a guy like Izzy, it's just going to be like, huh, see, this is, yeah. th this might not be the easiest thing to do, but it's there. It's, we, we, I can do this. A hundred percent, man. It gave, it gave me a lot of, a lot of good energy going into where I want to go. 
Amazing performance, O'Day. I mean, spectacular stuff. And, and I've said this, and I don't even know if you've ever even heard me say this, but I've said this many times over the last year and a half on like various programs that I've been on. I just think this sport needs more O'Day Osbournes. I think it does. <laughs> I'm very I, happy I for you, man. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Like, that, that, means, that means the world to me. Um, like I said, I really appreciate that. And I try, um, my heart is just to be me. And I think in 2021, I made a decision. I made a really, uh, I think the decision, this decision that I made will forever change the course of my career. And just to be the captain of my ship, you know what I'm saying? Um, I want to be able to dictate what I enjoy doing and what I like to do and have suggestions. For instance, you're an anchor you want to be able to dictate how you want your show to go or your interviews to go or the questions to ask, right? When you have people writing your, your questions for you and when you have people um, telling you here's what you should wear to work, it makes your job a lot more difficult, right? But then now when you take over and you say, you know what, these are the questions that I want to ask and this is what I want to wear, this is what I want to wear, wear to work. It makes your, man, it makes life so much easier. And I think... It's, it's made my 2021 just much better. You know, saying no to people that I've always said yes to, doing things how I want to do it. And not just that, but my coaches have been just amazing. And, you know, tra transitioning my style to, to, to formulate me, because my ceiling is, is, is it's ridiculous, right? My ceiling is ridiculous, and I'm not just saying that as an ego thing. I just know where I am, and I'm just like I'm 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 just scratching the surface of the things I can do. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just scratching that surface, and I'm like, oh, I, I just figured out some other stuff that I you know I've been working on. Like, oh man, I'm starting to get better at this. I'm starting to get better at this. I'm starting to get better at that. I'm starting to get better at that. You know what I'm saying? I'm starting to figure out all these things that I'm getting better and better and better and better at. And my coach is just like, yeah, let's keep pushing it. Let's keep getting you better. You know what I'm saying? And it's not, they're not, they're not trying to restrict me. Like, oh, no, you're getting too far out of the box. You got to come back in the box. And I want you to fight just this way. You know, they're not, they're not doing that. They're like, all right, let's keep, let's keep piling them, piling it on, pile it on, pile it on. You know, so. That's Zach Otto, man. I'm telling you. He just. Yeah, Zach's dope. He just, he knows, man. Well, I'm, listen, I, I'm, I'm very happy for you. I'm glad you're the captain of your own ship right now, and you're feeling that. You're feeling that flow, and uh, look forward to seeing what's next for you at 125, man. Hopefully, it's that fight you seek with with Francisco Figueiredo. And uh, thank you for the time, as always, O'Day. I learned a lot, as always. Thank you, man. You have a good rest of your day.